welcome back to my channel i would be lying if i said this video took me a very short time it took me a long time to get done so i'm hoping that you know all the elements all the youtube goodness is with me right now because i yeah it's, it's taken me a while to get this video done so i've been receiving a couple of emails from my tribe members who have been saying you know what i have a jittery feeling that my company might, might be retrenching or from people who are saying you know what i have been retrenched what are some of the things that i need to do so this video is about the steps or some of the things you should be doing or some of the steps you should be taking if you find yourself in that position i think that this is an incredibly, incredibly tough time for everyone, for everyone. Um, with the lockdown, with the economy and the in, yeah, the lockdown and the impact it has had on the economy. So today's video is based on some of the steps or some of the tips that I want to give you if you find yourself in a situation where you might potentially become retrenched or you have been retrenched. So the first one. And you know i like giving it in steps so that you know it's more manageable you can remember it more easily and i have seven steps today okay the first step stay calm but be proactive okay i know like i said it's an incredibly tough time for everyone more so for those people whose income has been affected and even more for those people who have been retrenched or are facing retrenchment so i think it's very important to really you know yeah just just keep calm keep calm and keep a cool head um even though it's tough i i i, I can admit that it's tough but you need to keep calm and keep a cool head because the decisions you take today because of the retrenchment will potentially influence your financial life altogether so if you make irrational decisions because you know you were scared it was out of fear it was out of you know um just quick decisions that you were taking without being informed it really can lead you down a very very slippery slope so you need to keep a cool head make sure that you know what you keep some level headedness in this situation so that you are able to make clear thorough and thought out decisions so i think that's very important and being proactive is saying that you realize the situation what it is and you're not going to bury your head in the sand that's number one number two you need to draw a survival budget and what do i mean by survival budget a survival budget means that you acknowledge that things are not the same as they used to be you are not fully employed anymore you don't have a guaranteed income every single month and you know that it matches your budget right now you need to go into a survival budget and say you know what what are the top 10 things that i cannot let go in my budget for example your house your car um food you know that that sort of thing those are things that you can't easily just say you know what i'm not gonna pay them so your budget needs to reflect that it needs to say you know what this are the things that i need and i will try to make sure that i pay this or i'll come up with a plan and i'll talk about what kind of plans you can come up with okay so you need to draw a survival budget if you've never done a budget before i am going to um link a budget template that you can download that i you that we use for money makeover which is a competition that runs um every year and it's in conjunction with absa and we've uploaded a budget for some of the candidates there and some of the followers for money makeover and i think it will be a very useful tool the third thing you need to be honest with your family if you are being retrenched and i know this might sound like a silly thing for me to say that you need to be honest when you're being retrenched because you know you, you assume that your family is the first um are the first people to know but two years ago i had an email from a gentleman who said you know what i have been retrenched but i have not told my family nor my wife for two months this person had been retrenched for two months and i do not judge 
so for me when we spoke about over the phone about you know why he thinks he hasn't told his family there was a lot of shame attached to that and uh we tried to work through some of the emotions but obviously um it was something that yeah he, we, yeah we had to work on eventually he did tell his family but prior to that for the two months he had been uh servicing his lifestyle he had been you know going on as if nothing had happened and that was about to spiral out of control his financial life was about to spiral out of control so be honest with your family they can be your biggest support system if you let them in on the situation and also also very important when you let your family know that you are being retrenched or you have been retrenched it allows them to you know um change their minds of their own spending habits if they're used to shopping if they're used to um holidays i know we don't do holidays anymore right now because of COVID 19 but those are some of the things that they think they should be expecting uh, it's about managing expectations i think that's the most important thing it's about managing expectations so that's the third thing the fourth thing know your severance package and your retirement benefits if you have a pension or provident fund you will be eligible to receive some funds and you have the option either to take it in cash or put it into a preservation fund or into an existing retirement annuity um, or transfer it to your new employer. So those are some of the options you do have and you need to think carefully and speak to a professional about all of these things and find the most suitable thing for you. What I will say though about a severance package or your retirement benefits is that with a severance package, sure, you are eligible to that and you can use that as 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 a as a bud for your budget to survive maybe three, four, five, six months, okay, for however long it takes you. But with your retirement benefits, remember guys, at some some point, someday you are going to retire. You're not gonna work your butt forever. Actually, no one wants to work themselves until their bones are dry, okay? So please, when you think about your pension or provident fund, still do remember that. And I know some people don't like pension funds and that sort of thing, but it's the biggest source of people's livelihood and retirement because most people, and this is a fact, most people do not save enough that at retirement they have um, some money to live off. What most people think, and especially with us as young people, we think, you know what, I'm going to make it big, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do all of these things. Nothing wrong with that, do that. But for most people, the biggest source of funding at their retirement is having this pension fund. <laughs> and this is true. I've seen it. Remember, I used to be in the industry, so I have definitely seen how it has helped people who otherwise would have never saved a cent. Otherwise, they would have never started that uh, a property portfolio. If you do, fantastic. But for me, your pension, provident fund is something for you to fall, to fall back on. Please, please note that as and when you are taking in um, advice or education from anywhere else, that you will retire someday and you need something to retire on, okay? Then the fifth thing is claim for unemployment insurance fund, UIF. If your employer and yourself have been paying towards UIF as labor law directs that as an employer, you need to be paying towards that, you can claim um, against UIF. I know there are some glitches and I know personally um, that, you know, you might feel like, you know what, <sighs> it's going to take forever, I'm not going to get it or it's not as much but i think in at this point in time every little bit goes a long way so do a claim for uif and how you can do that is easily by going onto their website and registering online and it's easy as that even if it takes a while but when you do receive those funds trust me they can make a difference in your budget and in your entire financial life okay then the sixth thing that I want you to do is speak to your creditors. This, if you have a bond, if you have a car, if you finance, like literally if you have some sort of a loan or you have financed anything through a bank or a creditor, you need to know that 
you need to speak to them you can't say you know what i will bury my head in the sand and hope for the best this is the time to be proactive talk to them tell them of your situation and they can work something out for you and i think in the last video i did speak about uh debt payment holidays that banks are giving yes they are not the most ideal thing because the interest is still capitalized unfortunately but you do not want to bury your head in the sand and think that things are just going to work themselves out and here's my son what do you want Baba? come hmm? you want to go today this day yeah. he's outside okay i'm coming let me finish here okay yeah, yeah. so that's another thing yeah speak to your bank be proactive and they definitely will look at your situation on a case-to-case -case and recommend something that is workable for you that is not going to put you in financial ruin okay and on that on that i will talk about credit life insurance credit life insurance is an insurance that you normally would buy and most people don't even know about this um you sign on the dotted line you don't even know that you do have it um, but it protects you that if you should you lose if you should lose your job if you do get retrenched if your income should be um, affected in some way that your debts or your monthly installments will still be paid so please make sure that you look at your statements and if you have credit life insurance claim from it so that at least for the next 12 months it pays up to 12 months of your debit orders so that's a big 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 game changer so please look into that as well okay and the last thing do not burn your bridges do not burn your bridges just because you got retrenched doesn't mean it was a personal thing we are all in this together COVID-19 hit businesses uh, hit the economy in ways that we could have not imagined we didn't see this coming so keep your relationships maintain your relationships because you never know when your next opportunity will come from either in a form of a new of new employment or either in a form of you establishing something of your own that you've always wanted to do so for me these are the seven things that you should look into or you should do if you suspect that your employer will retrench or you find yourself in a situation where your company is retrenching I know, like I said, it's an incredibly, incredibly difficult time for, for most people, but I do not think that this is the time to bury your head in the sand. This is the time for you to say, you know what, I know things are a little bit shitty right now, but I'm going to still um, try to get to be in control of the situation. And how you do that is through knowledge through equipping yourself with the right information and finding the right partners to get you to the next stage. So I can go on and on about this because I, I, I really feel very passionate about um, helping people in this time. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, that the decisions you make today, especially if you find yourself in a difficult situation, if you don't act rationally, you might find yourself in a worse off situation than you were um, just because of the retrenchment. You know, it's, it's, it's a horrible thing for sure. It's, it's, a, it's a daunting thing to go through, but it's just an event in your life. It doesn't define who you are. It doesn't mean anything about you as a person. You can still come out of this, but you need to do it and you need to equip yourself with the right information. So I will link... Um, the article that I did for my newsletter, which talks about all of these steps. So if you want some, if you want something to look into and read, and even some of the websites that I've recommended for you to go on to, I will do that. But I will also be linking a budget template as well, so that you can start that process of your survival budget. Or if you've never done a budget before, <laughs> I think this is a good opportunity for you to start. So thank you so much Dry, for watching and I hope to see you soon uh, because really it's not easy doing these videos. <laughs> it really isn't. Uh, so many things happen throughout the day and you just end up not doing the videos. But when I do do them, I'm always so happy and I cannot wait for the next one. 
All right, tribe. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you soon. And remember to subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell for all the upcoming videos as and when I do them. Um, yeah, have yourself a good weekend and hopefully you are safe and yeah, staying sane, really. All right. Cheers now. Bye.